Hello traders, this is Rich Dare from TradeSite. This is going to be the uh, daily market preview for this upcoming session. Today we had a, a pretty large gap down that was uh, mostly rectified here by the uh, by the ES and the NQs both both filling the gap. We closed lower on the day, but uh, it was a pretty good uh, effort to close that gap and to take that off the to-do list. Usually tops take time to form and uh, it definitely takes, takes longer to uh, change trend when you're trying to put a top in place than it is for a bottom. And closing that gap was definitely a, a key thing for, for, for potentially putting in a top here. And that's already been done. So I think we really have to look at the internals of the market here to try and try and discern where we're going to wind up and what's going to be the best side of the tape for the rest of the week. As you can see here in the ES futures, we're lower, lower by about seven handles on the day. In the NQs, we're only down about three. Um, actually, you know, the, the broad market stuff was really weaker than 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 the uh, than the Nasdaq stuff for a couple of reasons, and we'll look at the individual sectors in a little bit. The uh, dollar index uh, took a big pop as kind of a flight to safety. Uh, we definitely saw weakness uh, across the board in other currencies versus the dollar, and the dollar was was stronger on the day. We had a real pop here in the VIX, and also the put call ratio. The put call ratio last Thursday. Uh, had recorded a climactic reading. I'll, I'll put that up for you right now. Here's a look at the, the total put call ratio. Friday's reading was up in this area, but this was last Thursday's reading, which was down in the climactic area of uh, 0 0.5. And usually, when you when you get that climactic reading like that, you get a very sharp break in the market within uh, within about 48 to 72 hours of that reading. We definitely saw that, uh, you know, with a gap down on Monday morning, I think the options expiration being quadruple witching kind of held things in place until until, uh, until Monday. I know there's a news event, but uh, I, I really think that we probably would have been lower today regardless of, uh, of any kind of news. So with that in mind, I think we need to, to, keep in, to keep working with the idea that the market has what it needs in place now to start some corrective activity. It can be either lateral and go sideways in time or we can uh, roll lower in price and we'll look at those in a moment alright so here's a look at the uh, the ES futures we uh, do have that 13 exhaustion in place we're starting to uh, feel the feel the pressure from it with this move to the downside we do have a camouflage buy signal in place because the previous day was a very slight down day this down day has a condition where the close was above the open but lower on the day overall so this is a camouflage buy signal it's pretty it's a fairly weak one though since we're coming off of range high here just want to point this out there's gonna be a lot of these these bu these camouflage buy conditions uh, throughout the report today but they are very weak because we are coming off a of range high when you get a camouflage buy at range low that's much more meaningful Conversely, if we had a camouflage sell signal up here at range high, it would definitely be much more meaningful. The uh, NQ futures, well, here's the, here's the, uh, the thing. We, uh, today for the ES futures, we, we penetrated but did not close below the 10 EMA. So for now, the uh, short-term short -term trend, trend remains positive until we make that, until we make that lower close. All right, here are the NQ futures. The NQ futures lower on the day but again this camouflage condition but it doesn't really mean much because we're still uh, we're still you know basically just coming off of range high here key area 28 12 50 is still a wall here we haven't been able to penetrate that we spent all these days below it we did in the uh, in the NQ is just very subtly close below the 10 EMA but since we're so lateral it doesn't really mean much what's really going to mean something and the key is going to be a breakdown below today's load so if we get down below 2760 that could get momentum rolling to the downside in the NQs but for now the trend still remains positive until we can do that okay here's a look at here's a look at our 10-day uh, trend our 10-day trend is still basically within that same that same overbought threshold so there's still overbought in the overbought energy in the market that can be released to the downside and just to refresh here in the with the 10 with the 10 day trend when we get below this threshold or at this threshold that's when you usually either start to level off sideways or get some cre some corrective activity look at the correlations here here's a breach of the overbought level and here's the S&P what did the S&P do it went lower here's another one 
This time it just leveled the S&P off and went sideways for a couple of weeks. This touch, after a little bit of a bounce here, okay, caused this top and this decline. We have this penetration here, which was pretty extreme, and we did get a break to the downside here. And again, we've got this penetration here, which is pretty decent penetration, and we're just now starting to roll to the downside. So we're not going to get an oversold reading until we get up to this 1.35 threshold, and we've got a ways to go to get that. Today's closing trim was only uh, about uh, 1.7, so it's not that big bloated number that's really going to quickly uh, color the average. So for now, 10-day trend definitely still has uh, over overbought energy in it that is potential selling in the broad market. All right, right now here's our favorite risk on a risk off barometer. This is the S&P divided by the TLT. Uh, we've been talking about how we got up into this area of the uh, upper boundary of this channel here, and this channel has really been holding back the advance here in the market because this is kind of getting into the the over the overdone area where the risk risk on is pretty much at its at its peak, and we really have to take a break right now. We're starting to curl back down, but just just beware that we're not going to get to a an overdone risk off situation until we get all the way down to this to this trend channel. So we've got quite a bit of room there before that comes into play. Okay, here's a look at the uh, cumulative advanced declines. We're starting to see some uh, some weakness here. We're not seeing that uh, climactic rollover yet, where we're seeing we're seeing these things roll over well ahead of price. Uh, right now, we're just seeing a little bit of a rollover here that's essentially just consistent with price. This kind of uh, tends 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 to lead towards more of a uh, more nominal uh, sell-off if, if it develops, rather than a uh, you know a terminal long-term top for the market. We have to see how sharp these start to fall off if, in, if in fact, we do pick up some speed to the downside here. All right, here's a look at the NDX versus the uh, the broad market. We did actually pick up a little bit today because the broad market was weaker than the uh, than the than the actual um, NDX. So the NDX picked up a little bit here on this ratio. Um, that's actually positive. Uh, we got to be aware that that uh, you know Nas Nasdaq is really kind of right now driven to some extent by Apple, but it's very very possible that we could wind up with a condition where uh, Apple could could be positive and kind of collecting collecting money that's rotating out of these other higher beta names that are kind of kind of still up. So just be aware of that and that definitely could could color this where we could see the NDX coming on strongly here and it could be kind of a kind of a false positive where where even though that that is happening to some degree it it's not as at as positive as you might as you might think. Uh, I think definitely the one thing you want to keep an eye on is the socks and let's take a look at that cross right now. Here's the NDX versus the socks. We had a really good run to the upside here. We traded in this little lateral range. We had this this breakout and this attempt at this level, but we failed, and now we're actually down to the very bottom of of this um, of this area. Keep in mind that 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 break that that little level there is actually a very very important level. This is the weekly. We got up in the area of this breakdown, but couldn't couldn't penetrate through it. So this is still a very very formidable formidable level. Until the SOX can get that in gear, it's going to weigh on the uh, overall overall NDX. So definitely keep an eye on the SOX here and see if they can develop some kind of positive momentum. I just don't see it yet. Got to the key level, haven't taken it out yet. When they do take it, that's going to be a very important development. Okay, here's a look at the uh, the multi-sector daily chart. We can definitely see that there was uh, some, some risk being taken off the market today. Uh, the SOX, which is the blue line, you can see was was really fairly weak today and was really leading uh, our th our four majors to the downside. We had a little bit of a lift in the GDX or the XAU rather, which is the actual index, and it didn't really uh, didn't really pick up any upside momentum yet. But I I think that's still very very possible that that could that could uh, still attract some funds as people are rotating out of um, some of these more growth oriented assets and taking a little more defensive posture. Definitely make sure you're keeping an eye on your levels uh, for your for your XAU, the GDX, and also the the uh, precious metal stocks as well. All right, one more one more one more uh, comparison chart, and then we'll move on to some different stuff. The uh, OSX today was fairly weak, uh, and oil futures weren't so bad. Good news, bad news, depending on which side of the trade you're on. The one thing, the one problem is that the OSX uh, tends to lead crude prices. So if you're long crude. Uh, this is not really what you want to see. 
Granted, today they were kind of pulling the bids on a lot of stocks, so I don't think this is is uh, uh, really a, a, a death knell yet. What we want to make sure is that this doesn't persist. If this persists and we get across to the downside here in the OSX, that's going to be a real problem for uh, oil futures, and then we're going to be able to look look on the short side of oil overall. But for now, um, definitely negative development, but we have to see if this follows through to the downside. If we do get follow through to the downside, we're going to have some nice short setups, and we're going to, we're going to play those for sure. All right, now here's something fun. Um, this is a look at the uh, actual indexes within the market themselves, and this is going to be something that we're going to be doing going forward. Taking a look at this, we're looking at this right now, sorted uh, from the best performer on the day to the worst performer on the day. What we've done here is I've added uh, a new feature that we're going to be rolling out. Uh, this is right now in the very, very final stages of beta. We're going to be rolling this out to uh, to the subscribers very shortly. What we're going, what we've done here is we've added a feature where you can within any watch list add the comer and the seeker counts and have them projected in any time frame right now I'm set up here in the daily time frame for the uh, for these indexes and right now it's telling me exactly what's on the chart so if there's really nothing interesting happening I can just glance up my watch list and see where we are in the chart so right now if I'm going to take a look at the uh, uh, let's say the HWI here. I can see that in the in the uh, setup phase. Okay, we're we're at least nine bars up. We've got an S9, so we've got a sell signal in the uh, a sell setup completed in the uh, in the one through nine setup phase. And I can see here in the red numbers that right now it's day one of the countdown because the countdown just started on day nine here. And I can also see that in the comer now we're on on day six of a cell countdown. So this is going to be a new feature that's going to be really, really useful. And one of the best features is the fact that you can you can use this in all time frames. This will work in any in any time frame. So you can have this intraday for your five minutes, you can have it intraday for fifteen minutes, and you're going to be able to use this to your advantage and really get a lot of information that previously previously was really only available by drilling down through different charts. Okay, so let's take a look at the um, let's take a look at the um, individual charts now and some of the technical features of the uh, of the majors. All right, here's a look, here's a look at the BTK. The BTK has this uh, exhaustion in place. We've got a, we've got a nine, thirteen, and then this nine to the upside here. Still trying to pivot and work its way lower. Uh, we did open below the ten EMA, kind of using the eight eighths level here as support. And we closed just barely back above the 10 EMA. So for now, the the short-term trend still remains positive. Uh, if we take out if we take out today's low, we're going to go to short-term negative, and I think that uh, ultimately that will probably put this uh, this 50 DMA into play. If if and when that happens, uh, the gap for all intents and purposes, let's call this one closed. Um, the dirty gap is closed. The absolute gap is open by a little bit. But uh, I think that's close enough for hand grenades and horseshoes. So let's consider this gap closed, and uh, we've got this this little indecisive camouflage by near range high. So you know this one's definitely been a strong performer. It may be one of the, one of the last ones to turn. So this isn't really what I'm considering a leading indicator as far as the uh, the market goes. We're gonna be looking at some of those in a bit here. One thing I think that could wind up being a leading indicator here is the is the BKX banking index. Uh, is still in the overbought territory here above this 8 ace level. It touched the 10 EMA but stayed above it, so it still has relative strength. It was one of the stronger uh, broad market uh, sectors, even though it was down on the day. Definitely keep, an, keep watch on this thing. If this 5625 level at 8 ace is going to be really, really key and important going forward. Socks. The SOX is still using this risk level here from the, ex the seeker exhaustion. This is still in play. We now have a, the first real close below the 10 EMA. So as soon as we close below or make a tick below this today's candle, then we're going to go to a short-term negative in this and then validate this, uh, this exhaustion signal to the upside here. Also note here that with the MACD, we just have a fresh MACD cross. We've got plenty of room here before we go to the zero line and find any near-term support. 
from the MACD. Well, services were the last laggard. Very, very weak on the day. We do have this potential lower high in place now. Couldn't get through the 8 ace level at 250 on this last push. Uh, we do have this uh, seeker exhaustion signal on deck. We're only one, one candle away from that, one strong candle that is. So this is actually one that could really roll to the downside pretty nicely. So keep an eye on this. Um, we're starting to lose the 10 EMA, and the 50 is really, really close. So if we lose this 50 and get a settlement below that, I think the uh, the 200 DMA is probably going to wind up being in, in play pretty quickly, and it's all the way down here at about 234 or so. Okay, here's a look at the oil futures. Oil kind of hung in there today. It was really, really weak uh, for part of the session, but they kind of recouped those losses and closed up on the day. We're right in that 4 ace level, which is one of the the big three Murray math levels, 93.75. So definitely keep an eye on that area. We're below the 50, which is definitely keeping this thing intermediately negative. And also note that we are now eight bars up in the seeker setup phase. Eight bars up. So bars eight and bar nine is when you really start to see resistance. And if they have another strong close tomorrow and close this up around the 50, DMA with nine days up. That's going to be where I'm going to be looking for shorts back to the downside here. All right, and here's gold futures. Gold futures were positive on the day, I think, as you would, as you would expect uh, in a risk-off kind of environment. We are now definitely, we've qualified a little bit better above the 10 EMA. The only problem is we're now eight days up. In this council, we have one, maybe one more day before we find some resistance. If we do have a, a burst to the upside, we're probably going to find a good deal of resistance here at 1625 at this 4 ace level. So between 1625 and the prior high water mark, about 1620, you're going to find resistance here. All right, finally, I want to talk about the, uh, the TLT, which is the bonds. This is the other half of our S&P risk on, risk off metric. We have uh, pretty pretty well defined 913, 9 in place here. We've got 9 to the downside. We've got 13. That's 1 through 13 on the exhaustion countdown phase. And then we did another 9 to the downside here. This 9 to the downside, though, used the risk level, this magenta line, from the exhaustion buy signal as key support. So this exhaustion buy is still in place. We're starting to pivot back to the upside here. So this, this has a lot of room to run before we get into overhead at 118.75, which is the 4 ace level on the Murray Math Box, and also the uh, origin of this of this uh, static trend line from the 9 down. That's 119 and a quarter. So we've got plenty of room there on the upside if they so choose. We did close a little bit below the open, which is which is short-term bearish, but we are back above the uh, the 10 EMA. So if they, uh, if they choose to, uh, you know, pull their bids here from the equity market for for uh, for a few days or even a week, I think we're going to wind up seeing uh, continued interest in this. So the TLT, I think what we should be focusing on for the next couple of days is look for a gap down that you can buy a break back into the uh, above the opening range, like over a five minute high and whatnot. I think that's going to be profitable on the upside. So definitely going to be looking out for that next couple of days. Okay, so that's going to be it for tonight. As always, thank you for listening. And this has been Rich Derrick from TradeSite.